back to Lex Reads. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the typical or traditional black literature, black literature that everyone knows and you know reads. People will classify it as classic literature. You guys know I like to read, you know, the unknowns. I call them unsung blacks. I like to read more than the typical, you know, literature. I did want to share some that I have read and tell you if I, you know, like them or not. So yeah, let's just get started. For the first one, it is, of course, W. E. Du Bois. When you think about black literature, classic book literature, just black literature in general, you have to put in W. E. Du Bois, W. E. D. Du Bois. He was a sociologist, he was a activist, an author, and one thing I learned about him, I did not know that he did fictional work. I just thought he did, you know, like nonfiction and critical essays and things like that. But no, he does some fictional work and it's really good. But the classic black literature that he is known for is The Souls of Black Folks. Now you guys know I have to get the Penguin Classic Edition because come on now. I think, you know what, surprisingly, I only have one copy of this. Yeah, this, really good. Next is Miseducation of the Negro by Cardi G. Woodson. This is hands down, okay, classic literature. I have two copies of this. I was so excited when I saw that another Penguin Classic Edition, they came up with this because, I mean, this cover is just so pretty. Look, look at that. Oh my goodness. And this was published in 1933. Of course, we have him to think when it comes to Black History Month, because if it wasn't for Carter G. Woodson in February in the United States, that wouldn't even be recognized. Next is Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington. Now we know Booker T. and W. Du Bois, they were on opposite ends. Booker T. was like, uh-uh, you need to trade, okay? It's not about reading them books and stuff like that. Yeah, that's good, but you need to <laughs> learn how to do something, okay? Next is Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. Now, I have read all of Toni Morrison's fictional catalog, but what, three years ago, I did, about three years ago, I read all of her fictional books. And I would say the one that I really do love is Sula, God Help the Child, and I do like love. Toni Morrison can be very hard to read and if you miss one line, one word, you are lost for the whole book. You might as well start over again, okay? And Song of Solomon, obviously that is, you know, always on the classic literature list and it was okay to me. Um, I don't, didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. And I think because I read all of her fictional catalog, I have a good sense of her works and you know, know what I like and what I don't like. One thing I would say though, all of her books are different. You know, sometimes you have an author where it's like the same, you know, character in a different setting. No ma'am, not with Toni Morrison. And same with Beloved, which is another classic of hers. I listened to it and I, you know, I listened to it also. This is not my favorite. Mm -mm. I, I didn't like this and I did not like the movie at all. I think the reason why that movie did poorly is it was just, people weren't ready for that movie they were ready for that story I think they should have done something like Sula or Love that's a little bit more less complex this just was ahead of its time um and in movie form it yeah it didn't it just wasn't hitting hence why it did not do well at all but yeah with this one not my favorite not my favorite but I do think that it's a book that you should read at least once it's not a book that you have to read multiple times and you know some people love this book i'm not one of them it was a one and done i know what happened and that's it next is of course you got to mention alice walker the color purple i like this book read this book twice have two copies of this book i also like the movie and i like the musical that came out um recently last year oh uh, see my favorite character in this book probably would be shook I like Shug a lot um and of course I like Seely but something with Shug I like Lillian that's Shug's real name <laughs> um I do like her a lot I like her freeness but I think a lot of people with this book they miss the transformation when it comes to Mr. He becomes he's Mr. in the beginning but he becomes but he becomes Albert at the end I think when you do think about him you just think evil and just harsh and mean which he was okay we're not taking that away from him but if you read this book you know towards the end they become friends 
and he sees what he did was wrong and Celie is willing to forgive him and you know there was a lot of critics when it came up with this book of course black males they just couldn't stand it i was watching an interview with her and she said one person that couldn't stand this book was bill cosby he hated it which is like come on now bill as you want to talk all right next is invisible man by ralph ellison now y'all know i tried to read this and i could not get into it i got to page 178 which was a good amount even though this book is what five something but what i'm going to do with this i'm going to listen to it i just couldn't get down with it it was so laborious so yeah i actually have two copies of this book but i am going to take another stab at it i tried to read this back in november i believe of 2023 so i am gonna like i said try it again but try it in a different form and see if i like it next is native son by richard wright this not my favorite but i understand why it's a classic now for him his sentence structure and wording is brilliant like the way he writes sentences and crafts them they're so like clean and precise he knew how he knew how to write sentences i would say for me i was never a writer growing up in high school but he really did help me because i would read his works and copy his sentences and it did work for me especially during college times because i'm a sociology major so i had to write a lot and this his writing really did help me even though he writes fiction you know books but like i said the way he crafts those sentences it's like no other next of course we got to mention a james baldwin fire next time this is what this is non-fiction really did enjoy this and of course go tell on the mountain this was his first book semi-autobiographical i prefer baldwin's fictional works than his non-fiction i have read all of his fictional works and i would say my favorite is oh probably another country and i do like the amen corner which is a play but yeah like i said i do prefer his fiction better than his non-fiction but again his non-fiction is nothing to play with nothing to play with at all he's going to talk about the injustice when it comes to blacks uh whether you're a woman or a man he he goes real deep he real deep of course we got to mention frederick Douglass. i mean the narrative of frederick Douglass is like that's just classic literature you don't even have to say anything next is i know where the cage bird sings by maya angelou i have two copies of this book this book will always have a special place in my heart because it was the first book i read on my own i was a late reader so i read this when i was 14 and was just amazed like i've read also have read all of her autobiographies and this and probably gathered together in my name and heart of a woman is my favorite but i just i love every minute of this book it's Oh, it's like mic drop. And then lastly, Roots by Alex Haley. Now y'all still haven't read this book and have it on audio. I was trying to read this. This was back in a time where I had never read a book, a big book at all. It was like in the beginning of my, you know, reading. And I don't know why I was ahead of myself. <laughs> and I tried to like tab it to read a couple of pages. Like I was doing chapters and it was like, yeah, no. But I do think I can tackle this now because I have flexed my muscle and I've read several books that are of this capacity. I read his book, Queen, which love that book. It is Alex Haley's great grandmother on his fa father's side, I believe, and really liked it. And I love the miniseries. Now, of course, I've seen the miniseries, love the miniseries of Roots, but like I said, I haven't read it. But I do have the audio. What got me was the beginning of the book. So laborious because it's just oh it's just yeah it's so laborious but i think once i get past them couple of chapters when they're in africa i think when they start getting on the middle passage then it might pick up but it was like torture so yeah but i'm gonna have to suck it up and read it because it's like girl you are a black book collector and you haven't read roots yet that's a problem so i am gonna read this look before i perish lord willing i will read this but yeah guys that is it when it comes to classic black literature typical classic black literature y'all know i like you know the hidden gems yeah guys that's all i have for you and i'll be back with more black books bye